and we got another Austrian uh, crew. Oh, yeah. So this is a, so this is another Austrian crew as well. Austrian on the right and Denmark on the left. Oh, we've got Eagle playing banjo. Gets immediately jab locked, however. Gets himself jab locked by Fair. I didn't know that was possible. But now he finds himself in disadvantage versus this banjo. Yeah. The banjo, I feel like this is something maybe not all people would be ready for. It's still a new character. Came out pretty early. Really nice pacing here with the punch for this uh, side, up B by this side B. But yeah, maybe not everyone are ready for it. It's such a weird character. I. Here's, here's one thing as well. Uh, the this player seems to be quite like liberal with their use of Wonder Woman. Um, mm. the, the side B, the side B, the side B usage very early in the stock. Oh, we just saw an attempt at something a little bit naughty there, Falsa, but he didn't get it. But he's just putting Eagle on notice. Luigi Kid did indeed come to play. Apparently, he's not scared to throw those grenades back either. Yeah, but he's being he's being quite liberal. And take, oh, that was a stock taken with dash attack. I do love to see it. It was very. It, it did seem a little bit. Early Early and DI seemed a tiny bit suspect, but I'm not too sure. But it worked. Nice parry on all the attempt of the Zer right here. Funini also did not get grab at all percent. You can tell with all the grabs, he wants it, he yep. got it. Really, really finished it though. No. No, no, no. no. I think uh, there has been some counterplay developed for that. Oh, but Wonder Wing going to rip that, that, rip that stock out and even the stock count right up. But there has been some counterplay developed to that, oh, so people okay. are able to people are able to SDI in in, this, in in directions and not have that totally eviscerate you from zero every okay, single time. Cool, cool, cool. Good to hear. Okay, you'll still try here at the corner. Luigi Kid making an amazing job, just like making the lead trap going on. Still again with the forehand smash, not getting the punish, going for the grenade here with the dash tag, taken by the control, not letting uh, Benjo building his control. Okay, Lose his stage control, however, but just to there, there is zone breaking in its very, very rawest form. He saw his opponent had the space and he didn't want to have that Luigi approaching in behind the fireball. So he just said, Listen, you want this space, here's a Wonder Wing. Respect this option. Yeah. I love how Luigi actually. Nah, it's for Team Yerdo punishing yeah. the forest smash. Yeah. I love how Luigi King just adapt to the play of the grenade. Oh, 0% this time, not 1.2. Okay, nothing much, but still really good. I think you tried something a little bit fancy right there. Yeah, what I mean, what I mean, yeah. But yeah, uh, okay, the egg, the egg, just enough, just enough, we'll man. Have, we'll, we take those. I mean, if you, if you want to be a Luigi adult, just eat your egg, man, just eat your egg. <laughs> but yeah, so I love the fact that how he adapts to the game plan of Luigi. Now he's going for the grenade, he's catching them, all of them. Yeah. At the first time, he was just, you know, avoiding them and waiting for them. And Eagle is super full of respect. As soon as he throws a, a grenade, he's waiting to see what Luigi Kid is about to do and then try to find the punish. Luigi Kid, understanding the fact that he got time to do something about it, he just go for the grenade and went! Go for the for the bear! Yeah. Trying to go for that dash attack. He's super fiending for that dash attack right now as well. He went, he's gone for it twice in the last 10 seconds. He wants that stuff off, off that ledge because he keeps catching Eagle doing panic options right there. Is that death and he's gonna die right off the top. Really good at good game of adaptation either way right there. We it saw is. it with the we saw it with the dash attacks and then it eventually we also saw it with the Wonder Wing. He started respecting Wonder Wing as an option eventually as that game went on. Uh, so I feel like that's exactly that's like avoiding losing stocks to Wonder Wing like almost totally throughout that game is how he is is how he eventually got it. His own opportunity, the opportunities he, he created for himself were greater because he managed to avoid avoid dying to his opponents. Yeah, it was he was really good. What what is that? What is that? Yeah, uh, there's a Kirby sleeve. Oh, 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 that's, oh, oh that's a Smash Brothers yeah, sleeve that's actually. Like, okay, oh. okay, good call, man. Good call. Really good. Really good. Yeah. Nice. Hey, someone, somebody get this man to tweet out his tattoo artist. Also, he needs to, he needs to add his tattoo to our house right very now. Very true, very yeah. true. I, quite, I, do, I do enjoy that. That's, I think that might be the first. Oh, I've just noticed the, uh, the skeleton Luigi. Is yeah. that a skeleton Luigi? I think it is. <laughs> right oh, above man. It as well. But there's a Luigi Snake? kid until the bone. Yeah. This guy, yeah, Luigi kid. He is representing fully. Tag by name, tag by tattoo. That wonderful. What dedication. What a dedication. So. If that was Eagle going off, we can either expect to see uh, Cafe Mog or J Bob next. I don't know what either of these two players look like personally, and um, we're going to play this. We're going to play this guessing game of like who's actually coming on. Hopefully, they give us a little bit of help with their tags. Um, but yeah, when they when uh, there was a really nice moment in the last game where Banjo, um, where Luigi Kid got down thrown by Eagle. <coughs> Eagle, Eagle jumped out. 
and baited out an air dodge and he went for the absolute mix with this inward wonder wing. It would have been so good if that had hit. Unfortunately for him, that kind of play didn't come off. But I love, see I love, I love seeing those kind of hard breeds gone for at, at all levels, crew battles, doubles, whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah I agree, I agree. I, I feel like there was some try and I think also like in crews, this is where this is gonna work the most. If it's only one game, so just, you know, play all your cards, just play all of them right now because you need to get rid of those stocks yeah. as much as possible. Just don't put too much yourself at risk because if you lose your stock, as we said earlier, it's a lot of deficit for the whole team, not only for yourself. Yeah. Um, but, uh, yeah. Like, that's why we were seeing Eagle going for all of those Wonder Wing attempts on, on, like, his first to his last stock. He was just letting them fly because if he, as, if you get, if he gets to the, the next game, he has the number of win Wonder Wings multiplied by the number of stops he has left. So that does a, he, he gets as many attempts as he, as he needs to, really. Very true. Well. The thing is also, at the end of each stock, he didn't use all of them. He always got some, <laughs> some left, you know? Yeah. So I feel like I love the way he used them. Very really smart. But there we go, ladies and gentlemen. On Luigi, against Luigi Kid, we got Cafe Meg playing. Inkling. Oh, I expect nothing but buckets in this game. Up, up, up. Oh, yeah. there we go. Well, now, 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 now. We'll have none of that. None of that right now. None of that jumping the gun. Yeah. <laughs> but they can't understand. I mean, they can't understand. You're here. You're on stage. You want to fight. You're ready for it. And they're off. And there we go. I like the crowd countdowns. And I expect nothing but buttons in this uh -oh, game. Uh -oh, and uh -oh. is this death already? Uh -oh. no. no. He's managed to escape up to the upper platform. And it's really aggressive start from Luigi Kid immediately. He wants none of this inkling momentum to take to, to have to watch out for. He manages to get himself dash attacked off the stage though. I mean, the thing is, like, you don't want to, you don't want to see an inkling just moving around. Because, like, oh, oh too, too bad, too bad, only yeah. the, the soft spot. But yeah, inkling is moving a lot and really good at moving, you know, the dash, the soft at the back here. But that's the thing, you don't want to let inkling move around, so Luigi is just, like, yeah. going at it, you know? Well, your opponents, it's much harder for your opponent to move around if they're already in hit stun. <laughs> like, exactly. They're, when they're already <laughs> in tumble, they can only DI. <laughs> Oh, okay. that, that splat bomb sent, sent Luigi right the way over to the England, gets himself rolling, and that is going to be the game. Three stocks versus three stocks, no percent on the board. We have reset the situation right now. Yeah, that's really cool for the team. That's really cool for the team. That was really important. But uh, that was maybe a questionable forward smash on the center of the stage with his opponent maybe a bit far away. Yeah. He wasn't really at a roll distance or anything, but I mean, why not? Why not? With punishment practice, man. <laughs> with punishment practice. He just thought it was, He just thought his opponent needed to warm up a little bit and he just, just went, here you go, man. Take, yeah. one, of, take one of these. Uh, so coming in uh, is either going to be Squirrel or Sintro. Um, not, too, not too sure who, but from what we saw, this, uh, this Cafe Mug's inkling seems to be uh, seems to be very uh, seems to be a bit bait, bait and punish. Uh, yeah. from, from what I could infer from that one stop we got to see right there, I think it's all, all, always the kind of uh, the kind of uh, of uh, of play oh, that the inkling do. This is actually. this is squirrel. I this think is, it is. Yeah, this is squirrel uh, and it's uh, duck hunt. Yeah. Uh, just to let you know, the losers of the top eight are, are currently playing. Okay. Also. We're, we're going through these. Uh, we're going through these in tandem. Exactly. So, one thing. One thing I think of this matchup so far. Well, well not so far, but is Inkling doesn't really have that many long-lasting, uh, very active aerial hitboxes that she can use to deflect the can away and back towards Duck Hunt. Uh -huh. um, so, very much, uh, very much, Cafe Mug is playing a game of avoid the can rather than play around it. Yeah. And, uh, but one thing I do love to see, I love to see some item confirms. I love to see the can or the pigeon into forward air, back air, up air. I love, I love to see, uh, I love to see Squirrel playing, and forcing his opponent to play around these projectiles. Yeah, it's so funny. It's so funny, man. The can taking so much space. Also, with no platform, this is so hard for Captain Mac. Just like move around the can. It's just so hard and bit too far away. Okay, okay, nice spot dodge, finding the jab now. Just getting back a bit of control. I just saw Squirrel. Go for go for Miss Dare into land on stage into double spot dodge. Anyway, Cafe yeah, but doesn't matter if he if he pulled out a double spot dodge because way over on the other side of the stage we saw Cafe Mug get a jump pulled out and get back in for his trouble and lose his first stop. All right, good call. Okay, Cafe Mug is getting the control, trying to bait something. Red roll didn't came out, still managing to put him off stage. 
that's actually one of the main things. Inkling is good off stage, and Dokkunt does not have any shootbot on his up beat. You can punish it, but that aside, we roll is still beating percent, and that's a lot. 40% and a terrible stage positioning, but nice fair though. Okay, so um, Cafe Mug is all getting that up smash off first and foremost, evening out the stocks. 41% deficit, but I'm noticing Cafe Mug seems to be making a, a common mistake that you see a lot of people make against uh, Duck Hunt or, for example, Pac Man. And that mistake is having a fight with the projectiles rather than with the character itself. Um, you see it when people play against Pac-Man and attack the Hydrant, for example, and you see it when people focus too much on the can in front of them, or the gunman, or the pigeon, and you seem to be, um, you, you start throwing up hitboxes to deal with the projectiles, and never mind, you've got this dog and duck who are the threat coming in behind you, is coming in behind them as well, and you've diverted your attention from them, uh, from the actual danger. But I feel like Cafe Mug is doing an amazing job at just like, trying to adapt a bit on it. Yeah. And we saw here the can coming up on frame one, by the way. And you saw Cafe Mug just attack the Dark Hunt, and right away the can just came here. So they can be really tough. Nice but roll! Why did even that explode? Ooh, that but aside! You stop anyway! But, dude, that, um, there, was a, there was a weird moment right there on the other end of the ledge where yeah, yeah, yeah. Cafe Mug, like, had absolute nerves of steel to neutral get up into the can and managed to get away with it. I'm really surprised at the fact that it did not explode. But I think the... I think the... Um, explosion hitbox, you know, the, the detector is just at the center of the camp. But I'm not sure. Really, really sure. Yeah. But okay, actually I love the fact that Cafe Muxo was really adapting on the camp, by the way, playing a bit with the back air, you know, not going too much on the on the contest, moving around, still getting his focus on the dog, as you said just earlier, you know, he kept his focus really nicely, but he took so much percent, he yeah. needs to get rid at least of one stop right now. He's got oh. a mountain to climb, but he's got to chase this dog around the screen, and this is where this character thrives. Oh, oh and the pigeon saves himself, where's the match? He manages to still capitalize though, but oh, I just wish, oh no, he's run straight into the can. All Squirrel had to do in that situation was press B and it was game over. Uh, he, he committed just a bit too much to lateral movement on the ground and maybe forgot that there was a can there. This is where I feel also match of knowledge is a lot because the can only goes in one way. It cannot just go, you know, in zigzag. If, he's, uh, if you send it in a way, for instance, left to right, the can always will go to the right. But you need to receive a certain hit to change the direction. Yes. But it won't go left, right, left, right, left, right. No. So if you know that, uh, uh, Cafe Mug would have been able to just like run, roll behind, and he would have avoided the can. This is true. But what makes this difficult, Fausta, is that when the, ca when the can has been on stage for, let's say, five, ten exchanges already, you don't know how many times that can's been hit. So you're keeping mental track of which direction does is this can going in, and you don't really know until your opponent presses B again, and you see, oh, I move, it moves to the right, so I'm safe moving in this direction. And it's almost like uh, Snake C4, right? Yeah. After it stops flashing, you forget it's there, and you're sort of keeping mental track of it, and then seven things happen on the screen, and you worry about things one to six, and the seventh thing is stepping onto that C4, or stepping into that can's pathway. V very true. But in that specific situation, the can was just arrived. Yeah. But that's yeah. very true in a long match of relation, yeah. like... Uh, you are right. Yeah. The can is supposed to go, please help me. But if you got a reflector, the can might not be a problem. So here comes the Zelda that might save the day. This, this is this must be J-Bot then. And has Squirrel lost some stuff? Yeah, Squirrel gets the can out on stage and then is forced to uh, to kill the can immediately because uh, we haven't started yet. Yeah. All right, two stars behind. That thing, oh man, if only Cafe Mug did take the start. Would have been so easier for G-Bob. Now he's alone. He's alone and already at 40%. Squirrel with the complete control of the stage, man. That's tough. So here we, here we go. We've got that Naru's love on the neutral B button. And that is going to be a big, that should be a big part of this game. Because it's one, it's, a, it's an anti-zone breaking tool, it's a get off me move. And it also doubles oh up God. as a reflex versus this, this projectile based character. It is. But right now, man, Squirrel, Squirrel just playing around with it. Just playing around with it. Look at that, man. They keep the pressure once again. Ready to cover the roll. Because yeah, the duck is intangible. The duck is a sword. Look at that big! It is a sword! Damn, it's, it is a sword. And he's only taken 20, 30%. And there's, there we go. 
finally J-Bob starting to get some momentum. He doesn't care. Is he going to go deep? Ah. Oh, that is really not what the rest of Squirrel's team wanted to see. They needed to see him take more of an advantage, take more stops going forward, just for, so there were less, le there's less for the rest of his team to do. Yeah, but sometimes, you know, like, he died because he air dodged the uh, Dean of Fire. But sometimes Fire of Dean, oh, well, this idea. Dean's Din Fire. Dean's Fire, thank you, my dear. No, but no, yes, no <laughs> You know I got you, man. <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes, yeah, you... You'd rather get hit by the projectile than avoiding it, because that kind of situation can happen, actually. Yeah. Abs absolutely. Uh, there we go. Skrull getting rid of the, the Phantom immediately uh, by hitting Zelda, and that's something a lot of Zelda mates do sort of uh, do sort of forget to play around. Oh, Ooh. lightning kicks! Fausta, 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 Fausta. Have you ever been kicked so hard that time stopped? <laughs> 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 Ever been kicked so hard that time stopped, man? No, but I felt it. I felt this one. <laughs> oh man. Oh. I feel like I feel like we were robbed of what could have been a really, really like a, a, a great set between uh, two players right there because of just a little SD in the middle. A little SD in the middle. I would have liked to have seen more adaptation go between those two players because uh, Zelda versus Duck Hunt. Uh, well, Zelda vs. Zonus in general is a really interesting back and forth to watch if it's given enough time. Very true, very yeah. true actually. But the thing is that because yeah, like she got the reflector with the side B, she got the side B to force the opponent to approach or actually get the control, but also get the Dom B, which is the big armor. And she can just, you know, get behind the armor. Yeah, go for it, my knight. Go for <laughs> it. I was You're my bodyguard. <laughs> I'm just hiding behind. And she also has like special little advanced techniques to put herself in an even better position with that knight as well. So she can like jump towards you and almost like wave bounce backwards. So when, when she spawns the knight, that she's inside it. Very true, but very true. Things. Anyway, we can see that. Oh, that is popping up on Melee's side, ladies and gentlemen, because there is also a Melee Crew 3v3 battle. And you can keep up on the bracket on Smash.gg for the Valhalla 3, obviously. And unfortunately, I don't know who won because I'm behind the wall. We are behind the wall, but uh, yeah, there's a pop up. So take a look at the bracket. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, keep, keep your Sorry. eyes. Yeah, always keep your eyes on Melee as well, guys. But respect all the games. In fact, be involved with all the games there were. Oh, and it's a celebration oh. of Smash right here on the Ultimate Cruise right now. Respect all the game, but respect Zelda also. <laughs> My God, Rob. No, no respect for the princess. Oh man, she's like man. You know, you're from the castle age and stuff like that. I'm a freaking robot. No, no, man. We're gonna respect you, you and your magic and technology. Oh my god. Where is he? Now we're seeing you're going to have to try and make a three stop comeback from a zoning, from a, as a zoning character as well. Always not too, not too easy to do. Never too easy to do, sorry. Not at all, actually. Not at all. Oh, he tried to make an anti jump grab and finally Rob was so ready for yeah. it. No tomahawks around here, good sir. There goes Nair, tries oh. to do the instant grab, re-catch Nair, always going to make it back from that, manages to avoid the gyro, stuck at the ledge however, and now you've got to get back versus this amazing Rob, Rob ledge trapping game that you've got. Man, and Sintro is not letting anything going yeah. through, anything, still getting hit by that Obby, fortunately for once I want to say, get one start, but man look at that! Okay, he scooped him so well with that side B. He faked, he fainted like it was, he put the um, he put the gyro at the ledge, baited the rollout to avoid the gyro, and a lot of Rob's in that situation go for an up smash. This guy, he was just like, I'm gonna stay in place, but do side B and just lean a little bit to the right, and I'll scoop you from there, and I'll drag you back towards the gyro, black back towards the ledge, and you're going straight towards the blast zone again. And that's how, that's how you see that game out with style, man. Oh, we, I'm so sorry, Zelda. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's the kind of smash we like to see. <laughs> uh, yeah, it is, man. Oh, that was amazing. That was amazing. So that team gonna be into uh, the winner.